when did this happen? This happened in the year 1992, we were posted at the Davis base. The mission wasn't gonna last more than two months, that later felt eternal. The situation worsened by the day, we thought the terrible weather was the only inconvenience there in Antarctica. We truly were wrong. I was hired to complete a mission in Antarctica but I was never informed of what type of mission it was until we had arrived there. When I arrived at the Davis base, I hoped to find at the most 10 agents. But there was at least 250 people of military personnel, scientists and politicians. Everything became confusing as soon as I set foot on Antarctica. What was the mission about? Part of the mission was informed to us after 21 days of being posted there. We were separated into different bases. There was even personnel further away by kilometers. One of the 21 days that we waited there before we moved on, the sky turned red, and I mean red like blood. It made no sense to us. The sky was like blood. We all went outside to observe such phenomena. The scientists looked at each other, they had no idea what was happening there. I thought, okay, this is happening in the entire world. But no, that has only happened right there. That's when you realize that those things only happen in Antarctica. They told us that we would be taken to some islands separated from Antarctica. We thought, alright. We traveled to a remote base on the South Pole to then return to some islands on the peninsula. What sense did this make? I thought. We were sent off after the 21 days like I mentioned, and the rest of them had as well. There were four leaders. And each commanded large groups. They were in a rush to get to these islands, on that specific date. There must be no possibility of failure. They would say. We moved along without the slightest clue about what we had to do there. That was the moment that you begin to feel regret about having left the continents. But there was good money in this deal. This is why the majority ended up accepting this mission in the ends of the earth. Can you show the location of these islands in a map? I can't show you, the godforsaken islands aren't in any map. Either way, even if they were, I couldn't even tell where they were located. The route to there was even longer than from my own country to Antarctica. It didn't make any sense at all. At one point I told the pilot, are you taking me back home? Or what? I'm about to jump off at any second. Later you realize that when you look downwards that you're literally in the middle of nowhere. And you regret even have said those words. You are literally in the middle of nothing. And sometimes other islands and vegetation and climate would show up here and there, what can I tell you? Antarctica lacks logical sense. It is unexplainable. You have to experience it to simply just understand it. What happened once you arrived at these islands? We arrived there, and there were other soldiers. I have no idea what type of dressing they wore. I have never seen that in my life as a soldier. It was like colored blue with white. They were pale the vast majority, with piercing eyes of colors gray and blue. They didn't seem human honestly. Those people seemed like they're from another world, you know. They were like robots. They did everything with detail. Many times throughout those days, I have gotten angry with several of them. Their attitude bothered me. They treated us like dogs. They didn't bother to even listen to me. They did everything in a synchronized manner. It seemed as if they all thought the same things, all together at once. It was complete madness, you understand? How did they present themselves? Were they military? They didn't present themselves at all. They made contact with the bosses only. Only with those in high ranks. To the rest of us, they wouldn't even look at us. They were military, but they lacked any sort of humanity. I still believe that those weren't humans, they just followed orders. How many days did you stay in these islands? It was four nights. They were like that of a movie. We could see lights in the sky almost all the time. Red lights, blue lights, 
green lights and yellow tones in the background. Literally everything. It seemed like an airport of who knows what kind of technology. One night we saw thousands of those lights collision with each other. There was a goddamn war happening in the skies of those islands. We all watched, and we were all speechless. What could we do? A comrade who knew a leader very well as he was friends with his now past father. Would many times ask him what the absolute hell is going on? But he never answered him. Go to sleep and get ready, they would tell us. We had gone to a war without knowing it. And we didn't even know about who we were fighting. How far were the lights? What did the leaders decide? No, they were just too far from us. But the night of the fires in the sky, as we named it, was incredible. There was literal fire in the sky, you understand? It would stay there for a while in the middle of nothing. Something had been burning. Then we saw many lights fall. But never did they fall near us, nor did we hear a single sound. We didn't hear anything fall on the ocean. They seemed to disappear. They were simply disappearing. Like a war of ghostly jets. Where did you all go next? After the fourth night, a helicopter of the forces took us to another area of the islands. It never landed, we had to drop down from a considerable height. We were trained, we understood that it was a dangerous landing. Otherwise, why would the helicopter wait in the air? We awaited difficult situations, it was clear. We looked at each other, we were four. We knew very well that this mission was set for us to not return. But now it was too late, what could we do? Other than jump into action and charge at anyone. So never did a mission exist once you landed? They told us, go and fight soldiers, that's what we're paying you for. You're now facing the most powerful enemy that Earth could ever encounter. And you are the ones in charge of making them retreat, at least retreat. That was right before jumping in. So then we had dropped down with fear. It was a terrible idea carried out in a terrible manner. In a remote island that wouldn't show up in the maps, against enemies who also didn't show up in no history books. Who was the enemy? The enemy were those godforsaken robot people, who were sending us there. But we realized that later on. They were in compliance with the leaders of our own military. Do you understand? They were traitors. We then met up with several other comrades who were also there on that mission. Few had survived. They told us about certain areas of that land. There were 12 soldiers left out of 250 of them. You see, it was a fucking bloodbath. We all united by the coast in a further area from where we landed. That way we all could settle in a more calm manner. According to the other soldiers, nothing could attack us there. But then again what could we know about an island that we didn't know of at all? Absolutely nothing, you understand? The enemies in relation to your question, were the giants from there. Some of them were even 5 meters high. There was people so tall that you wouldn't imagine. You could even see some of them through the tops of trees. When I saw the first one, I wanted to go home. Life becomes miniature. You start to take notice about so many things. Your life is in extreme danger. In an enormous island with giants that surround you. If you escape from there, then you'd deal with the robots on blue. And if not, then you'd have to cross the entire Antarctica of which was like an eternal white mantle of ice that no one could even walk it. What can you do then, other than unite with your team and confront what you need to? We had been strictly trained. But the situation surpassed everything regardless. How long were you there for? 15 days that felt like 15 years. I'm not kidding. I would have preferred a goddamn prison. No one could sleep. We didn't even recognize the vegetation and wilderness. Everything was weird and completely different. One day we saw a mammoth. Can you imagine? A mammoth in this era. 
all the reality that you have in your mind becomes completely lost. You enter a sort of trance where your eyes are showing you something, and your mind doesn't believe it. You start to become crazy entirely. These giants would never attack us, but they always got close to look at us. They observed us from afar. They intimidated us. We always had our weapons on hand and ready to fire. But. What could we do against such beasts? Their size was insane, we couldn't even tickle them with our weapons. What was the mission then? Attack the giants? We believe that this wasn't even the real mission. They brought us over there as lab rats. They were experimenting with us. It all seemed like a game where those sorry robots wouldn't miss out on a single detail. We ended up shooting a giant who got too close. We heard the order to fire and we didn't stop. It was a rainstorm of bullets, the giant went down after almost 15 minutes of firing non-stop. The giant never defended itself. It was the worst thing we could have ever done. What happened then? Did you approach the dead giant? We couldn't even do anything. As soon as that giant went down, other giants came for us in a fury. The war started that day. No one could make mistakes in those islands. The giants had technology we've never seen. They were shooting blue lasers. I think it was cobalt. The lasers were going through many of the comrades. Everything became unreal in a second. Our team was going down like flies. We ran the furthest and the fastest that we could. When I looked back, there was no one left. No one. I was the only one running for my life. The giants looked at me from far away, if they wanted to take me out, they could do it. Maybe they felt bad for me, I'm not sure. But they let me live. How were you able to get out of there? When I had to stop, because my breathing could no longer allow me to run. A helicopter showed up over my head. And a ladder was sent down to me. I didn't even think, I climbed up without thinking. It was the same pilot who was now back to find survivors. No one was left. I had escaped how I could. But I'm sure they let me live. Then we arrived at the previous point of the island where the pale robots were. I hated them with every fiber of my being. They then locked me in a room. I told them my story and my experience and everything that went down. Obviously they told me that I could tell it all to whoever, that either way nobody would believe me. And they took me out of there, the same way that I got there. Through that eternal white mantle towards the Davis base.